Thank you, everyone. And Mark, I put in the minutes just in case somehow you got a chance to work on them, but we can do that in the fall. I didn't get to them. I'm sorry. That's not a problem. I wasn't really expecting you to, but I didn't want to not have it on the agenda in case somehow <laughs> somehow you did. So no worries. Um, Treasurer's report. I just a quick update. Um, yep. We did get some more funds in. Let me make sure I get the right one here. Um, so we already voted to recommend um, our set-asides and clawbacks and three of the projects that were presented. Mm -hmm. So this column here is where we're at. So open space has 30,500, historic set-aside is 46,550, this housing set-aside 258,000, um, general reserve 500,000, so available general fund um, 1,167. And that's of course, if town meeting approves these columns before right um, and then so that's where we're at um and then the revenue we did get in another quarter of the town's real estate taxes um, brings us up to 244 for the town portion we do expect another 70,000 probably you know due may 1st um and the state distribution we talked about last time was 93 percent and um the earnings have gone the other way, but at least it's not as big as it was last year. And hopefully it, it'll, you know, stay pretty neutral. Right. Um, so we've added 515 to the fund this year. And again, the state portion has been huge the last two years, partly because they put in the extra 10 million and 20 million. And um, there was a lot of activity at the Registry of Deeds. This year, the Registry of Deeds is off 34%. And who knows if the state will put any extra funds. So it's hard to know what our distribution will be, our ma match will be um, from the state for the year coming up. Right. Um, so that's just a quick update on the treasurers. Hey, uh, Mary, um, on the, on the, some kind of report that I've gotten that with money, there's a line item that says, Tax liens redeemed, interest and penalties. So that's a, if somebody doesn't pay their taxes on time so that they still owe for 2022, when it gets paid, it doesn't get put into 2023. It gets put into, you know, 2022. And they may have to pay some interest or penalties because they paid late. So it's okay. never a big figure, but it is no, part of the part of the um, collection, um, mm -hmm. but thank you. I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Um, so here we are with the Russell School and, you know, a big thank you to Dan and Courtney. They've been working very hard these last four weeks to try to fine tune what, what they think is needed and talk to more of the town and, and more, um, more of the boards and committees to get input. So um, I want to start what I thought I would do is first ask them to reiterate what they're asking for. I know we have their application, but is anything changed? And then um, if somebody wants to make a motion in a second, we can discuss it. And then um, we'll, um, oh, Denise is on. Welcome, Denise. I'm glad you're here. Um, Thank you. Sorry I was late. No problem. We, oh, we understand. <laughs> um, and... So we'll start with that. So Courtney or Dan, do you want to, I know you gave us a new um, a application. With you, if you want to talk about any changes you might have made or, or what you're looking for at this point. Sure. So uh, there are no significant changes to the application. Um, the only things we changed were uh, the recipient of funds. Uh, we, we switched from Town of Hadley to the select board uh, per the select board's recommendation. Um, and then we also changed the contact names. We took out Gary Berg and added me. Okay. And then, so the million two fifty six thousand that you're requesting, um, you also had sent the bids for um, having some more studies done or figures brought up to date. Is that are those figures in addition to the million two fifty six, or they're included in the million two fifty six? They're included, right, Dan? Okay. Does somebody want to make a motion to 
accept um, to not to yeah a motion for us to vote on the application. Uh, the question that I have is: there are three addresses for Russell School. Which one is right? <laughs> That is a good question. I've, I've, I've noticed on my paperwork that Mary so di diligently sent me that I was reviewing it and I found three different addresses. In our application or just in general? In general. Okay. The old Mohawk has a 125 uh, Russell Street. Yeah. Um, It'd be an even number on the same side as Town Hall, wouldn't you think? Town Hall's on Middle so. Street. Oh, but there is a middle street. There is a street in between. Um, someone else is dying. Yeah, but I know in a in a photo, or I guess when you look at Russell School from Russell Street, it says 104. And then uh, I got a, on the application, it says 135 Russell Street. Yeah. So I, you know, if we're going to go give you guys $1.2 million, <laughs> we better be pretty much right <laughs> You know, with all due respect. And the uh, old Amherst uh, uh, is 131 Russell Street. Well, that's something they can they can work on figuring out. Yeah. Does somebody I, I want to make that, but... Thank you, Edwin. Does somebody want to make a motion to um, accept the application? I would make a motion to recommend this uh, application to town meeting. Is there a second? Second. Who said second? Uh, Denise. Denise. Thank you, Denise. All right. So discussion. Who has questions for Dan and Courtney? Uh, I was, I'll start off by saying that I was very impressed reading the letter. I thought it was very well presented. You had uh, anticipated uh, or already heard a lot of the questions and addressed them. So um, thank you. Yeah. And I thought it really did the, you know, walked all around it and said, here are all, all, all of the options. So I was impressed. Right. Thank you. Andy Klepacki, do you have thoughts or questions? Uh, we're calling on people now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only if there's silence and nobody's saying anything. <laughs> um, oh, I don't have any, I mean, I uh, again, I appreciate all the effort everybody's done here and the, and the letter was, uh, you know, very thorough and it's addressing a lot of the concerns. Um, I certainly... Uh, appreciate the AHF letter as well. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been a, a whole lot of material to review. Yeah. Over the uh, years that um, that I've looked at this project as well as Dan and, and the Municipal Building Committee and, and uh, now uh, the Russell School Committee. I don't have any uh, additional questions. Neither do I. I let, let the people decide. Mark? Uh, just a question for the committee, uh, the uh, Save the School Committee. Were you, uh, did you get any angst from the uh, short paragraph in the AHF letter after the one through 4D um scope of work the and I'm, I'm saying particularly they say does not support stabilization of the building without a plan for its long-term reuse mm -hmm. Did that give you a little angst and if so what is your response if we asked about that because i guess i am <laughs> i mean i think that's the question that everyone is asking um you know do we want to put that money in to stabilization if there's no set plan. Um, and that's why we came up with all of the plans. <laughs> Just so uh, so there's not a no at the uh, at the other end of this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, Dan, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would agree with Courtney. Um, certainly uh, 
when when uh, people were asking for a specific plan, and the, this at this point, the plan is to stabilize the building. So, you know, we, you know, there there are so many so many options. The sky is the limit when it comes to what are you know what can we use the building for. Um, you know, at this point, we're you know a critical moment for the building itself. So the object is to, is to stabilize it so that we can have the option to use it. Exactly. Um, so anybody can have the option to use it. And, you know, you know, I don't want to corner the town into, into any particular avenue, but I want to afford this town the option to use that building in the future. Um, and, you know, particularly uh, the town, um, as a municipality to use the building. I truly believe that it's time um, to uh, move town offices in its in their entirety, um, you know, from town hall to the Russell School building in in the future, in the, you know, in the five to 10 year future. And then um, you can figure out what to do with the existing town hall that's certainly 54 years older than the Russell School building is way too close to route nine mm -hmm. and there are so many other things uh you know that you know you know that should have been done years ago uh, the town has been in quite a bind and has been quite pinched for space for the past 20 25 years and um it's you know it's simply because we haven't had the uh ability to do the type of renovation to that building that that needs to be done so now that we have some really nice new uh, facilities to work from, and as well as the good, the old Goodwin building, which we are well on our way to updating and bringing it into the next century. Um, this, you know, this is all great. We are in a perfect position to do this now. And, um, you know, I, I'm happy to have afforded the, uh, the town the ability to have this choice. Um, so I really hope that, uh, you know, the, the, the citizens in the town uh, speak in favor of getting this project up and running and uh, with the faith that the future generations will have many, many years of use of this structure. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I wish I had more answers for the question, you know, what exactly is it going to end up as? Uh, but like I said, the sky's the limit, and I'm happy to afford the town the opportunity to have those choices. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we've also been we've been stuck in a cycle of we need people saying we need a plan uh, to secure the money, but we also need money to secure the plan. So um, that's that's the state we're in right now. No, and I I I just wanted to hear your your responses because I took that it it made me think of what you said earlier. <clears throat> that we've had other chances to stabilize it. Now we're kind of at the end of that of of that road. Mm -hmm. um, and I interpreted their their sentence as if we had, if they had been brought in earlier, before the urgency of the roof and things like that, they would get right involved. But right now they don't want to get involved in the stabilization. They want to get involved with the long term use of it so they would come on after we help you stabilize it so um gotcha that's how i interpret it and it sounds like that's mm -hmm. not out of line okay carolyn holstein here um, um carolyn we're gonna just talk to hear from the committee members first oh, okay I'll, and then i'll I be glad to have you in and say i'm a member of the historic uh i know you are thank you also school committee um denise or Risa, would you like to chime in I am all for uh, stabilizing this building. It just, I think I said last time, if we don't do this now, we could end up with nothing but a pile of bricks in a parking lot. And um, I, I think it's high time we preserve this, stabilize this, so we do have some options. I think the, the Brussels School Committee's done a wonderful job presenting and, a, and their application and everything that they've done. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Denise, would you like to weigh in? Yeah, I mean, just to echo um, 
the work that the Russell School Committee has done, Courtney and Dan we took data and information from our community and turned it into actionable items. And I think that's what's needed to happen the whole time. And for you to take the time to do it and present it is really important. Um, and I'm definitely w will vote to support this. I'm going to chime in before I open it up to um, Diana and Carolyn, or we're so glad you're here. Um, again, I just think you've done an amazing amount of work and you've talked with a lot of boards and committees. There are some concerns I have, um, and part of it is just the dollars and cents. And I'm going to put this back up for our 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 um, spreadsheet here. Um, we do have enough money right now to to do the million two forty six. We take the rest of the historic set aside. We take all of the general. Um, and one undesignated fund reserve. I like that term better than general because it's undesignated. It still has to go towards open historic or housing um, and, and open space um, recreation. But it would take all of that and it would dip into our reserve. Um, though we should get another 70,000 before town meetings, so we would be back up to the full reserve. So we do have the funds to do it. What makes me a little nervous is hearing about um, is hearing about Goodwin maybe needing another 1.7 million in phase two and the town hall wanting to do some siding and window repair and you know certainly other things, APRs and other projects in town, um, which we may be restricted on what we can do. So it's it, you know, I guess my one of my thoughts is especially looking past the stabilization is if the town wants to do all of this, it, it can't just look to CPA funds because the CPA funds just aren't yeah. there. Right. And um, I don't want to put 1.256 million into a building if, if it's then going to just sit because there's no other way to go forward. Um, and, you know, in 19 years, we've raised $7 million through CPA almost 3 million of that from the state, which is fabulous. That's 3 million that has come into Hadley of state money that Hadley's been able to choose how to spend. Um, but when, you know, we're talking about so much more money than that is needed. So between these three historic buildings. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, that said, I don't think it should be the CPA committee to say yes or no personally. I think it should be the town. Um, to decide. So um, in that sense, I would vote in favor of this to bring it to town meeting and continue the discussion. I think Courtney and Dan, your committee is going to need to do some um, documents and, and information for people. And, you know, you, you don't have a whole lot of time at town meeting to talk. So it's, you know, trying to um, present it so that you know people can understand and and you know I was at the select board meeting and heard a lot of them saying you know it's hard to hard to we need to know what's happening the other thing concern I have is that you know we'll we'll vote if this does pass a town meeting which you know I think it would be great if it did um it's so far removed from what's needed to go out for bid so that in that sense I'm glad that that includes the studies that you want to do because I think hopefully they would give the, the exact details that would be needed to actually put it out to bid so that, you know, it could move forward even for the stabilization. Cause that's, that's a piece of it that sometimes falls between the cracks. It seems um, to actually have it, have the information needed for, because the bid, the procurement is a very complicated, complicated thing as well. Um, so that's, you know, having these professional mm -hmm. studies. And I understand you don't want to just start with a study because then you're afraid it'll take too long to get, mm -hmm. you know, for fall town meeting. Um, so okay. that's kind of a bold move. I mean, I think it'd be easier to get the study to pass than the whole million two fifty six. So hopefully, you know, the whole thing fits together. Um, <clears throat> it's been interesting seeing all that. Andy? Yeah, just to echo uh, some of that sentiment there, I think some of the concerns also might revolve around uh, engineering and architectural uh, stamps on this to ensure that the town's money is going into areas that uh, will, will stabilize the building, but we don't have another aspect of the building 
uh, be compromised and uh, due to just, uh, you know, oversight because of deterioration since the DRA or Mohawk reports. So we want to be able to have an architect or an engineer come in and say, yes, you're going to put one point, this, this 1.2 million, which was based on the 2019 numbers, um, and, and ensure that the, you know, while you're figuring out what you're going to do with the building, it will remain, you know, you don't, uh, you, you, know, you won't necessarily have to go back to doing another emergency patch repair, um, taking more money that, you know, at that point, CPA may not have enough to, to possibly bail it out. Uh, so architect, engineer, and then, you know, of course, you've heard use, use, use. Um, you know, we, you know, we know town hall did a study long ago uh, and it didn't go anywhere. Um, and you know, the other pushback you might hear, of course, as Mary mentioned, with you got town hall, you got Goodwin, um, you know, uh, two other historical buildings that are also fighting for money. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we, you know, we know what happened with North Hadley Hall and we saw what happened with Hooker. Um, but that at that point, there was a lot of historical buildings. And um, um, so, um, you know, finding support for all three, that that's uh, certainly the committee's challenge. And so far, you've done a, a, a good job of getting the information together. Thank you. Mark? I would just add that <clears throat> I would hate to see this go down uh, at town meeting because it's just too much. And if in, if there's a plan B you could fall back on, like just just the roof this year and come back in a in another year or two to do other structural things, if that might make it more palatable. To the voters, I, I would just hate to see this go down in flames if there's another option. So okay. I don't know if you can prepare to make a make a change on the floor if you feel that the winds are blowing that way. Um, anyway, and maybe you know include the two studies that you want done along with that roof repair, and that would really. Um, you know, that's that's the smaller way to go. And but again, it's still asking the town to support the building. And so there'll be, you know, you'll get a good indication, I would think, mm -hmm. even at a smaller figure. Um, but it is, you know, you, you can amend it here, you can amend it on town meeting. Um, those are options. Yeah, I'm, I'm just afraid that with people watching this, they're going to hear that if if a vote for yes on this is basically cleaning out our funds for the good one next year so th they might see this as a one or the other which is definitely not going to be in the favor of this project so i don't you know i don't know there is i'm in support do, but i'm i'm just one vote we do have an option to bond which we did for the the um school but even that I, I really refined the figures on that. And the most we could bond if we were willing to take the 300,000, the town, we can only do it on the town basis, on uh, the town input, um, not on the state. It'd be 2,150, which when you start adding the Goodwin and what this building needs and maybe what town hall needs and what this needs, it just, there's not. And that would be for 15 years, we wouldn't be using the town money for anything else but P&I, principal and interest. So it's, to me, that's not a very attractive um, option. So the, the CPA funds were definitely pushing their limits and it just means more funds besides this would be needed. Um, and I know Courtney, you had listed a whole bunch of grant opportunities. And I also hear people say, it is so hard to get those grants, especially in yeah. Hadley. And yeah. it's, you know, it's a huge amount of work and they look at Hadley's mm -hmm. figures and tax rate and say, you know, that's not that greatest need in the state. So it's it's hard to know. It's hard to know. But this, like you say, would give options for future use. So in terms of uh, the Goodwin needing more money, is it for sure that they're going to apply for CPA funding or are you just anticipating that they might? They've mentioned that's what they want to do. Um, okay. Dan, I think you're on that as well. Again, where else are they <laughs> going to get the money from? That's the... sure. That's but you have our application now. You don't have theirs, right? 
we ha- they've done phase one and they're that's actually supposed to go out to bid within the next week or two, which is fabulous. Um, and the town has put in over half a million into Goodwin with this phase one and earlier projects. So it's it's certainly something the town has supported. But mm-hmm. you're right. We don't we don't have that application yet, but um, but I, I believe I believe they're getting hard harder numbers on the elevator and and things like that. They're getting you know uh, current okay. estimate. Yeah, that yeah. that the bid for the elevator study is supposed to go out within the next week or two, also. So they should be able to get those, you know, hopefully for a fall town meeting. So it's it's not far behind. Um, but yeah, at our at our most recent MBC meeting we did um we did um discuss the goodwin um at length and there you know there's an amount of of uh work that um you know in my opinion it doesn't really fall under cpa um but i mean it it can according to the guidelines if they need the they need to do accessibility and an elevator they can get that from cpa yeah um i, I uh the other thing that we discussed is we can certainly use it you know we could do the phase one uh restorations which is mostly electrical and uh some of the ceiling work i think that that is incidental to the electrical uh, but that will keep the goodwin in good shape uh and you know whether they decide to do the phase two right away um, uh, remains to be seen. Um, we can certainly, you know, we can we can get by with using that building as is. Uh, like Mary said, a bunch of money went into that building over the past few years, and the the library trustees did a great job at organizing and uh, getting money appropriated from CPA to get their projects done to keep that building stable. Um, it doesn't need to be stabilized. It's got a good, strong slate roof, and it's it's still going to last a bunch of years. So there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be done to that building. Uh, there are so many things that do need to be completed at the Rust School in order for the building to remain sturdy. Um, you know, town hall windows. Yes, you can get CPA money to do town hall windows, but you know, I think that. You know, if, if we get town hall into the Russell School and he can do the windows at, at the old town hall, when it's not occupied, it's going to be a lot easier. <laughs> and, you know, to try to do windows in an occupied building, especially an occupied municipal building, um, you know, I, I'd want to put that off until the building's <laughs> vacant. Um, and I, I want to work with town to make sure that these things get done in order. Um, I'm not giving up on, on the Russell School just because we... Uh, get the get the money from CPA or not. Um, I think that um, you know if we do get the CPA money and we're able to stabilize the structure, um, you know a bunch of the the I think the money will come back because we should uh, we should be able to fit in much of the stabilization efforts and a bunch of the planning and still have money left over to go back to CPA that we'll, we'll not be able to complete a bunch of the projects, but we will be able to complete a bunch of the planning over the next couple of years. So um, with a long-term plan, I think it all can work out. Um, and I, I do take into consideration everyone's concerns. It is a lot of money uh, out of CPA for one project. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not our goal. We don't want to drain CPA. Um, <clears throat> you guys have been really responsible and doing a great job at allocating those funds to the proper uh, projects in town. Um, and I've said it a bunch of times already, you know, the, the $350,000 of CPA money into cemeteries over the past few years. And the people who built the Russell school are buried in those cemeteries. <laughs> and, and they, you know, too. <laughs> and, you know, right. And they, I mean, I, I think they would want to have, you know, some money spent on what they built for the living. Uh, and, you know, and, you know, I can't really hold a candle to what they created, but I, I want to be able to respect it and honor it. So, Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Um, Carolyn and Diana, would you like to add some comments? Diana, do you want to go first? <clears throat> Thank you, Carolyn. Hi everyone, Diana West. I'm the chairperson of the Hadley Historical Commission. And 
Um, I believe I made my points at the last meeting we had that, you know, if not now, when? You know, we're talking about these other buildings we also need to take care of. But ultimately, the town has not taken care of Russell School for the past 30 years. And there are really big concerns that if we let this go on, then it will be a pile of rubble in the next couple of years. And I guess you have to determine, like, how is the Goodwin building more important than Russell School? I think they are on equal footing. And, you know, we haven't taken care of other historic buildings in town, as previously mentioned, such as the North Hadley Hall and uh, Hooker School, which unfortunately did come down. So I just encourage the committee to vote in favor of this, to bring it before the full town at town meeting. I think they need to have the opportunity to vote for this either from CPA funds or down the road if it doesn't pass here with CPA funds than what it would look like if tax money was raised to help support this building. We're talking about accessibility needs. I know that there are grants out there to improve accessibility on historic buildings as that is the law that we need to follow to make sure that everyone can access these buildings. So I once again, like it, the time is now because if not now, then we won't have this resource and it's a very unique building in Hadley. Hadley does not have a great um, difference really in, their in her architectural styles. And this building really stands out. And so I think that's something else that we should consider. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Carolyn? Um, sure. Um, I joined the Russell School Committee <clears throat> um, to look at ways in which we could possibly use this building in the future. Um, but first of all, it has to be stabilized. There's no doubt about it. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful building. As Diane just said, the architecture is unique. Um, it's much different than town hall and much different than the, um, the old library. It's unique to the town and the town has so many beautiful homes it would just be a shame to let this unique, gorgeous building go. If if you've you've all seen pictures of the inside looking out, mm -hmm. it's um, absolutely wonderful. And as Dan has said earlier, um, it was built with the, hot, the best materials. We can't match it today. But there's n nothing that we can do to match anything. The quality of this building. So that's why I'm supporting it. Um, I know that the roof is ridiculously bad, seeing pictures of the leaks and everything. So um, let's go for it. Mm -hmm. Why not? <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. And I apologize, you are on the Russell School Committee. I had forgotten that. So yeah, so glad you're here. Well, I used to be on CPA, by the way. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> right. Right. Now you're the clerk of the... Russell School. Oh, yes. Not by choice, but... <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Three cheers for clerks, I'll tell you. <laughs> Any other comments before we vote? Or mm -hmm. um, All right. Well, we have a motion to accept the application as presented by the Russell School Committee with the change being that the funds would be received by the town of Hadley. Um, and we haven't had anybody say they wanted to bond. So I'm just assuming that we're, unless somebody says otherwise, that we're voting to, to take it out. And this will bring us down to um, the five, it will be by town meeting, we'll have our 500,000 reserve um, and then, you know, to build it up as we can. Um, if it, you know, obviously it's the town's voting that that um, will determine whether or not it goes forward. Um, all those in favor, um, please say aye. 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 All right. Um, Reese, did Risa, did you? Yes. Vote? Yes, I did. Yes. All those aye. opposed. Andy Klapaki is opposed. Are there any abstentions? So it's one, two, three, four, five, five, one. Is that correct? Five, one, oh. 
and we'll take the money out of the historic set aside and the, um, the rest will be out of the general fund. Um, we have a placeholder in the town meeting. So here's that. Well, Dan and Car Courtney and Carolyn, thank you for joining us. And thank we'll you so see much. you in May. You've still got a big job ahead of you. <laughs> we sure do. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Good we luck. still have some yeah. meeting left, so Thank we'll you. keep going on our, our meeting here. Um, a quick update on outstanding projects. Uh -huh. um, things are moving, which is exciting. Um, the town hall pillars and columns have been stalled a little bit, but they've they're at the point within the next week one to three weeks of being sent out for bid so that's fantastic jennifer's been working hard to get these all the final stages and getting all the information she needs um and the goodwin repairs the same thing they should go out for bid in the next few weeks so hopefully they get some good responses and the work can get started Hockenham fence rig is in place just this week so hopefully they'll be finishing that up um, in the next couple of weeks. And the Golden Court Windows, Risa said, is they've got bids and they're meeting this Wednesday to determine which bid to go forward with. Um, and then it'll be a few months to make the windows and then get them installed. So that's right on track. Is it Durka Park Structures? Greg's last day was Friday. Um, and but he managed to get the benches in place last week and the, the some of the structures up and and they've hired out the company that makes the big playground structures to come out, I think this spring and install them. So the Turka Park is right on track. The steeple work at the church, I think it's supposed to happen very soon. Um, and then I don't know about, I'm sure the Hopkins playing fields are working hard on what they need to do. I know they had planned on the fall, I think late summer or so to, to do that. Um, so, so it's in the, so we're really on track with just about everything that's out there. So mm -hmm. that's, that's good to know. Hopefully by our next meeting, it'll be, um, we'll be able to say there quite a few of those are done. Um, so the land use coordinator, this is something Carolyn Brennan had has proposed. She proposed it to the select board. Um, she talked with me about it on because it could have a small CPA portion. And um, the bulk of this, they've hired somebody part time, 18 hours a week, I think, to be the Conservation Commission um, person mm -hmm. to replace Shyla. And it's hard to keep somebody part time. It's I know they've split the Conservation Commission between different towns in the past. And she said it would just be really helpful to have somebody that's really focused on land um, with probably about the same amount of hours, 18 hours or so on um, as a planning board. Right now, they especially need just admin to get their minutes in place and get things filed where needed and followed through with and paperwork done and um, but it, you know, could grow to some more responsibilities with that board. And then she wanted to know what about some ZBA work and what about CPA? I mean, we have the open space, but it could be it could encompass more things. And um, we do have the CPA committee can ask for its yearly amount, which we haven't voted on yet, which we need to do tonight. Um, mm -hmm. And we can ask for up to 5%, which if you estimate 50,000, 500,000 could be 25 grand, which I certainly don't see us needing. Um, if we were super conservative and just did it on the town portion, it would be about 15 grand. Um, but she suggested, what about about 5,000 to start having somebody, you know, work on CPA items, um, which would be a lot of what I've been doing. Um, it would say that person could take the minutes and <laughs> write up the minutes and also the treasurer um, do the spreadsheets that I've been doing. And um, I sent you a list of some of the duties. Mm -hmm. it, it is really, I mean, I just tried to fill in with what I thought was really needed so that people would know what was going on and that, you know, they people that received the funds would know what was expected of them and how to submit bills and 
also how it works if they need more time and, and stuff like that. And, and um, I, you know, I, it's been a pleasure doing it. And, and I certainly hope to continue, you know, being on the committee and stuff. But it's I think for the long term of the committee, it's helpful to have a staff person in town that's doing a lot of this, because then no matter who's on the CPA committee, those basic tasks are getting done. And I think it's also helpful for people in town if they have questions, they, you know, there's somebody on staff that can mm. um, at least direct them where to go. And, and I think it's helpful for communication with different boards and committees. And, you know, I've had various people say, can you talk to me about this? And I've gone out to some of their properties and I, you know, stuff like that. And um, so I think it would be helpful to, um, to the town as well, but um, it certainly needs to be something this committee feels is worthwhile and and we'd be willing to, you know, we can ask for that extra 5,000 on top of last year, we asked for 5,000 and we only spent the usual 1750 for the state dues to the coalition. Um, but I think it's still good. Like one time when we needed the lawyer to ask about the grant agreement, you know, again, that was about $500. It wasn't a huge amount, but it's, mm -hmm. I think it's good to have some, mm -hmm. some funds there. But the funds can't be used for a project. They can't be used, you know, like for the Russell School to do one of those studies. It can't, you know, it can't be a project, it, but it can be um, things. And there's some things I think, I mean, I've done a lot to try to bring the website current and up to date and, and a lot of information on it. But I think the staff person could definitely, you know, do more and continue with that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's... Did I, we did we directly fund the uh, banners, you know, this project by yes. the funded yes. by, or was that by the, our projects? No, that was from us. As, that as was a, our administrative fund. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was maybe $70. It was, again, not a, not a big thing, but I think they're important. So, um, yeah. 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 I think if the money is allocated towards uh, wages, um, it has to be spent that way. Uh, I can't mix uh, money that has been set aside for paying somebody an hourly rate can't be mixed into projects and just as a, a brief aside this position came up at the most recent finance committee meeting uh, okay. the, that we were the committee was hearing uh, the town budget so uh, carolyn presented it is a um as a hybrid position with a, a piece of that person's time uh being committed to cpa and they're looking to grow that person's hours to include CPA. Time. Good, good, good. And to be a full-time position with full-time benefits. So, you know, the 5,000 isn't just that person's salary. It's also their benefits, which, you know, and taxes, <laughs> they take a chunk of it. Um, no, I think if we want to retain talent, we need to get a full-time job with benefits out there. Mm -hmm. I support it. Good. Um, yep. I think Mary did a wonderful job uh, re, uh, drawing out the uh, what we're what's expected of this person, and I'm all in favor of it. That's a good thing. Yeah. Andy Morris Freeman had a good comment on it. He, um, I thought, he suggested adding, you know, like the grant agreement. Um, I worked with the town attorney and and others in town to when we needed to come up for the windows at Golden Court and for the first church. But we, we spent a lot of time and sent the drafts to the attorney. And so we have a good template on that. But mm -hmm. um, he suggested putting that in there as a duty, you know, as following up on Sorry. that. Which And then he said one thing he thought shouldn't be in there, um, which I think is valid, is, you know, I had had in there to help people. And, you know, when they have an application to kind of be the first blush to say yes or no, this sounds like it fits. And he said that really he thought should be a committee person and not the staff person. And um, especially starting out, I think that's a valid point. And then we'll see where it ends up down yeah. the road. But um, so I, I thought I'd change that if people. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. I, I thought your list of, of uh, potential responsibilities is quite extensive. And, uh, you know, we want to... Um, grow it as as uh, as skills and, and experience uh, allow but certainly focus on the administrative type of things that uh, that could be done in town with somebody in town hall during business hours mm -hmm. Good. 
Well, does somebody, we need to make a motion to um, vote for our CPA expense. And I would, I would, I'll make a motion that our CPA expense for FY 2024 be $10,000. And that I'll way, second, I'll second have, that motion. That way we still have our 5,000. Right. If needed. And then the 5,000 for the position. That's right. I, okay. I heard that. Okay. Good for you, Mark. <laughs> Any other um, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Was that Denise? Yes, aye. Okay. <laughs> Any That's opposed? Unanimous. Any abstain? Okay, great. Well, those were our two placeholders. Um, Russell School, and then the amount of money. So we'll put that through. Two, three, um, four, so the last thing I have on here is um, our next meeting. And we had talked about staying away <laughs> from the 25th of September for um, one of the holidays. So um, I came up with some suggestions just so people could hopefully check their calendars. But um we could meet. And I liked having, I, I mean, I think I like having more than just two weeks between the first and second meeting, because sometimes there's a bit to figure out. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I mean, we could Monday, August 28th, which is before, it's a week before Labor Day. I don't know if people are tend to be away or if that's a good date. Um, and then Monday, September 18th for the second, or if we wanted to keep it after Labor Day, maybe the day after that Tuesday um, in September 18th. I mean, I either one is fine with me, but it's a lot easier to set it up now than try to do this in the summer. <laughs> right, it is. And I, I think that there's a lot of meetings usually on Tuesdays that yeah. uh, would interfere. So yeah. let's have an, uh, like your first choice on Mondays and we'll go from there. Does that That's suit right everyone else? Especially when Edwin says he won't be here in the fall. No, I'm, I'm he's, Yeah, he's setting the calendar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sure you want to leave, Edwin? <laughs> yeah, I am. It's time to get some younger so blood. What What Monday were you recommending? The, the 28th of August. Yep. Obviously not Labor Day. And, right. Um, and I don't want to have just a week between the meetings. And we really can't go any later because town meeting is usually the next month. So, And, um, and the 21st is not an option too early? The 25th would be the next Monday. And that's actually... No, no. no you mean the 21st, 21st of August? 21st oh, of August. no, that's definitely an option also. I think the more we get into mid-August, the more likely... People well, might be on vacation, I'm just thinking but... that week leading into Labor Day, sometimes people take that as a vacation week uh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, because it's really like one of the last weeks before school starts and uh, right. et cetera. Right. right. No, I agree. I agree. I, I August is tough. August is tough. From just no, other think, committees yeah. I've been on it. People tend to be. Even it, if... it ends before the uh, before it's over. Sure. Yeah. Right. Um, but we certainly could do the the twenty first, um, which I think is still enough time if people get us the applications by the fifteenth. <clears throat> That's um, six days later. I could make it like August tenth for the applications. Um, right. I just, you know, they get them to me and I send them out to you, which is quick. But um, especially if it's virtual, it's we used to. People used, to, Dan, you'd appreciate this. People used to have to bring nine copies, paper copies of every single piece. I mean, we'd have books. And mm -hmm. so I think, you know, I still ask for one hard copy because then we have at least for the records. But mm -hmm. I think the digital is makes it easier to get everyone um, their copies. But um, I just want to make sure there's enough time from getting them to sending them to you for you to be able to read them. So I think if we're, if we'd move up to the 21st, I'd want to move the applications due up um, right. some as well, like to the 10th. Yeah, would be if, us. if you think about the fact that the meeting 
is after we've had a week to review the, you know, then then you're you're getting into the middle of. If you do the twenty first, you're getting into the middle of August, which may be challenging for some people to to really review material. I think I'll be around, but I'm just saying others might. Not. I mean, the other thing is we say they're due August first, and mm -hmm. then we have three weeks to read them, and that would give people. Um, and I also am aware it's hard for people who are trying to get the applications done if they're dealing with summer and trying to get people's attention. But um, but we don't tend to get as much in the fall because I think a lot of the a lot is for the. Um, but we we do certainly get some big ones. So, well, what if we did applications due August first, and our first mm -hmm. meeting is August twenty one. And our second meeting is September 18th. So, so I'm not going to be here. So sounds <laughs> good to me. I can live with that. <clears throat> I do agree. Monday seems to work well for this committee. So I'd rather not change yeah. that. Yeah, I, I would support Edwin's comment because I a planning board. We meet first and third Tuesday nights. Right. right. What happened to August 28th? We don't like August 28th. Um, Andy suggested that that's kind of everyone's last hurrah for summer vacation. Okay. I'm going to be away on the 21st, but I, I think I'll have internet. So mm -hmm. I'll be there. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's all, there's no clear winner because you could also have people taking kids to college and stuff like that. You know, that's right. They all start different times. Mm hmm <clears throat> yeah, fall sports are you know are, are starting to roll at that point too. And, yeah, yeah, that's fine. The twenty first is that works. Thank you, Denise. Yeah, another advantage of virtual, and I assume we can still be. I think. It, does anyone know for sure? I think it was extended like a whole another year. Um, uh, I, don't I, was, I don't know. We were waiting to hear sure. if it got signed by the governor. There was okay. a there was a bill to to add it. To extend it two years to 2025, mm -hmm. um, but it was waiting for signatures. Well, let me ask you: Are you comfortable with still all virtual, if that's a possibility, or would you prefer hybrid? I think we should go on vacation with Denise. <laughs> How would Denise like that? <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I just some of the hybrid meetings I've been participating in have been a real struggle trying to have people um, heard, I think. Um, I'm hoping that they extend the Zoom option, either Zoom or hybrid, because we have found, at least on the planning board, we get much more attendance and engagement um, when people don't have to go out at night and drive to a meeting and go up a stairs with no elevator and you know it just um and also it moves projects along faster because consultants are often more available you know for right. example we do a lot with um uh tom reedy the attorney in town he represents a lot of our clients and like there was one night he had to be in uh eastern mass for something but he was able to zoom and be and do both, whereas otherwise, you know, you, you would lose a month. So, yeah. and it saves a lot of money if you're not paying a consultant to travel two hours, too. It's, yeah. you know, it's I like it because I can put the spreadsheets up and have people <laughs> see them, and I think that uh, that's helpful too. It's been very beneficial for finance as well. But I, at the three different committees I'm on, where it's either all virtual, like this one, a hybrid, because finance can be has has sometimes sat in with the select board and then uh, uh, DPW, which is a hundred percent in person old school. So it's uh, uh, it is the hybrid to me, as you said, is one of the hardest ones to get people to, you know, because of technology delays and everybody telling them that they're muted, um, you know, those types of things. <laughs> um, but I think if we can keep virtual going, that's, that works for this. Okay. Well, then I, I just 
I, I prefer hybrid too, but I mean, I prefer all virtual too also, but um, I just wanted to make sure other people did as well. So, all right, well, we will do August 1st with um, for the application deadline and then meet August 21st and September 18th. And that gives us extra time to read applications and, and, um, and it also gives an extra week for between the two meetings for figuring out questions and, and getting, you know, appropriate information. So that sounds good. Okay. All right. And, and when, if this out. really is your last meeting, just, it is. Uh, it just is. say thank you so much for your years and years and years, years of service, service and, and um, help and understanding and, and hard questions. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. I truly appreciate it. And I, I will echo uh, Joe Fitzgibbon by saying this was the best committee that he served on in town. And mm -hmm. I will say the same thing the best committee in town it's so. it's nice to have state funds especially available for these projects that mean a lot to hadley so right that's great good all right okay. make a motion to edwin would you like to make i move we adjourn thank you very much mary